Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. I don't know about you guys, but I love online shopping, but the one thing that I do hate is always seeing a blank promo code box when I'm in the checkout window. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and then applies the best one it finds right to your cart. How it works? I'm glad you asked. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for the coupons. It can find for that site and boom, it applies it to that site, to that box that we don't like empty when we're checking out because we don't know promo codes. But this finds the promo codes. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Now, I love using Honey because I can use it wherever I shop online, either on my phone or my computer as well, Um, whether I'm buying new camera equipment or I'm getting groceries because I personally just hate spending full price on anything. So wherever there's a coupon, who doesn't like enjoying a couple dollars off here and there? Honey doesn't just work on desktop. It also works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. So here's what you can do. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. I'd never recommend something I don't use. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash crew with a K. That's joinhoney.com slash crew. Five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome. Here's the thing. I'm Kev on stage. She's that chick angel. All right, all right, all right, all right. So many people hit me up, text, DM, tweets, everywhere. Kev, we got the zip of the wheel. I said, Kev, you better not tap dance around it, Kev, because you know you didn't tap dance when it is your friend, and you better be a man of better. And I want to hear what you got to say. They were so incessant that we were actually recording this on Monday for our Patreon audience who is watching this live. Okay, people are watching yeah. live. The rest of you gonna have to wait till Wednesday, and that's when everybody that I've been talking about you probably gonna be annoyed by then. But oh, if you're yeah. part of the stage crew. You see it happening in real time. You could be a part of the conversation. Matter of fact, you're part of the Sage Crew on my Patreon. Listen, lately I've been using that as my own personal uh, social media. I've been posting stuff on there that don't never make it over here. They knew I was going to the Oscars when I found out. They knew you were on. They saw a photo of you on the carpet early. They saw me on the carpet. They see stuff that don't ever go because they were like, I love them. Yeah. Okay. We've got a whole community going over there. So Mm -hmm. uh, actually, they get to watch this episode ad free because it's just too much to talk about. So we're going to go. Ad free angel gonna come and put the ads in later because she over there, uh, down to the television program doing a start mm-hmm. a new job. Yeah, Kevin gonna help with them ads too because that is the new arrangement. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, that's the yeah, first is. one, Kev. You ready? We'll talk about it. So, so we'll talk about <laughs> that. Later. About. Josh is gonna read the ads from now on. I'm gonna give Josh a little, a little bit of a bump Wait, so what? he can read the ads because I'm out. I need to take my breaks. All right, so first things first. I'm gonna. People are asking, as the person of the group who was actually in the Oscars, what was it like in the Oscars? And I'm going to tell y'all what it was like. I actually wanted to talk about my whole experience, but because of Slapgate, we got to fast forward to the end. Later, we'll talk about the beginning, if even at all on this episode. So here's what happened. Me and Melissa went to the Oscars. Okay, We start work at 11 o'clock. We down there on the red carpet taking pictures, doing all this, that, there. By the time the Oscars happened, we tired and all this, that. So Melissa went to change clothes. Okay. Change she forgot her clothes. credentials. They were not going to let her back into the Oscars. So I went to meet her, gave her her credentials. We come back in the Oscars. Will and them ain't even up yet. So they got an open bar situation and stuff. And you can't drink in the Y'all was drinking? Oscars. Oh, yeah. They got free food, free drinks, all of this, that, and the third. Oh, wow. So as great parents, our kids had ordered Postmates. So um, they we were having trouble with the, the guard, the thing that lets them in. So we were staying outside At of the, the estate so we could make sure that the guard, I mean, the people could get the postmates the couldn't get over the moat that protected the house. <sighs> you all so, missed it. Y'all weren't in there. So we weren't even in the actual Oscars. We are standing <laughs> watching it on TV. 
Right? That's what happens I'm, when you got up to stretch. You're like, that. that's 60 minutes. This is almost I'm, seven. And that's the thing. I wasn't even rushing to get back in because I just wanted to be in, in my seat if Will won the Dear God. Oscar. Right? So I see Chris Rock, and I'm like, oh, Chris Rock's up there. Me and Melissa stand there watching it on the TV. So then we all – so we basically regular people by then. <laughs> right. Wow. Regular people. That's I crazy. Mean, okay. Josh, hush. I didn't so, say it. I, we're watching I just like everybody else. And here's the here's the part that I'm going to get to because we talked to our friends who were sitting 15, 20 feet away, and the experience is exactly the same. Uh-huh. Uh, like you've seen in the videos, there's no reason to put the videos up and all that stuff. You've seen all that. Will walks up. Like, well, actually, let me back up. I hear the, the Chris Rock G.I. Jane joke. And I'm like, eh, that's not really that good of a joke, but you know, Will's giving his his little laugh. They cut to Jada. She gives a solid to moderately severe eye roll. I think one eye, they rolled independent of each other. One mm-hmm. followed the other. It went like this. Yes. It was like a, yeah, yeah. That was like, oh. By the time they come back to Will, he was walking on the stage. I see him reach back. I see him smack. And I'm like, oh, wow. That's a weird skit to like have. That's odd. He smacked. By the time he sat down, Liz is like, Kev, I don't think that was planned. And I'm like, nah, Liz, he, this is Will Smith, my good friend, Willer, Carol Smith II. When they cut back to Will yelling and his face was serious, we were like, oh, oh, this is serious. When we go back up in the Oscars, right after that commercial break is when we go in. Now, me and See, oh. that's what I said. That's what happens. I don't know how to do that. So we go back in. Was that record thing on there with the first no, one? It's, it's, it's recorded now, though. Hey, you hey, if it's working, it. It, hey, hey, hey. Uh, I think it cuts off every 30 mm-hmm. minutes. I don't know how to What's stop it. But... No. So anyway, we go back in the Oscars. I look over because we up at the top. We so high up. We was felt like we was going <laughs> to fall. The back of our knees were tingly when we were sitting down. <laughs> and by that point in time, Almost everybody up there had left because it was long. People was drinking. They was going to parties. So we sit down. I look over. Will ain't at his seat. I'm like, Liz, Will gone. She said, what? But she didn't want to look over because she's scared of heights. So I look over. I'm like, he is gone during this commercial break. So they go to the commercial, things like that. And then the next commercial break, he's back, right? So boom, I'm like, okay, Liz, they probably going. He going to win this. He was going to win this Oscar more than likely regardless. Like he had that role and i don't want to say he was due for an oscar but to me he was due and the academy do be like all right you go ahead and get your little oscar they did to leonardo dicaprio they gave him an oscar for a movie i felt felt like wasn't really oscar worthy but i get it so when will wins first of all Liz said something funny she was like they're gonna go back there and switch out the envelope they ain't gonna let will win so when will (laughs) wins and he starts uh speaking now there's probably four five thousand people up in the oscars at this point, oh wow! When I tell you, it was so quiet in that theater, humongous. There's probably five, six hundred people in the section we're at alone. I felt like I was sitting on the front row because of how quiet it wasn't only quiet, it was like people were holding their breath in the room. It was like you could hear a mouse piss on cotton. Wow, the first drop, very so yeah, it was. So he gives his speech and we're just like, and I'm like, is he going to apologize to Chris? And he, he did not. He did no. not. We'll talk about this later, but he literally just posted an apology as we are uh, doing this uh, thing. So I'm like, how is he going to you know, do this? And he got up there strong and he said, Richard Williams was a man who protected his family. He fiercely protected his family. And I was like, whoo. Oh, he channeled Richard Williams. Richard Williams still alive. He still channeled him. And uh, so then Josh hit me with it. So mind you, let me back up. Josh is sending me tweets because it's going crazy. And I'm, you know, hearing the, the real life feed because we couldn't even, obviously I was outside. You couldn't hear him. So I talked to my friend who was up front, right? He was he was right there sitting next to. Right there. Uh, right, right I'm there. talking right there next to the nominees on the first area, like right to the left. Where Lapita mm-hmm. was, Beyonce and them, he was right over there. He said they watching from there 
and they don't know that it's real or not. He was like, we thought they timed it, and you heard a smack. Now, he said the thing that was real was that cussing that Will did. Mm. Keep my the, the songwriter said, keep my wife's name out of your redacted mouth. And Chris said, okay, it was, no, no, Chris said, it was just a joke, a G.I. Jane, keep, oh, come on here again. Keep my wife's name out of your redacted mouth. Right? That's when it became mm -hmm. real. So fast forward to the after party. We go to the governor's ball. Now, the governor's ball, let me tell you how crazy the governor's ball is. Me and Liz looking at each other like, nigga, we up in here. We shouldn't be up in here. But they know they invited us, but it still feel crazy. While we are walking into the governor's ball, in front of us right here, and I mean the person in front of us, Steven Spielberg, right here. Big Steve was in there? Oh, yeah. Big yay. Steve. Right in front of us, the person behind us, Billy Eilish. And I'm talking about we shuffling in line. I'm like, listen, that goes Steve Spill. She said, that's Steve Spill. I said, that's Steve Spill. And I said, there go Billy I. And Phineas was up in there. We walk in to my left, Serena Williams. Serena was right there. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I ain't proud of it. I hung around. I, I stopped walking, I look around, I said, I can't find a seat. There's no seats around here. Listen, said, what are you doing? I can't find no what you said. Oh, Serena made eye contact with me. Hello, Serena. I love you. Okay, now we can go find a seat. So when we get in, we find ourselves a little seat. They're bringing around drinks and food like this. All the black people, when they're talking to white people, are like, oh, hello, congratulations. Oh, my gosh. We should work. We should build. When they come around me and Liz, they like, nigga, did you see what happened? I'm talking about, I don't want to say the names, but famous people that you know are famous, that you would recognize. Actors, producers, directors, on-screen talent. They, When they see me and Liz, they come over. Nigga, you see the wheel thing? Nigga, it's crazy. <laughs> I didn't see you. Hey, we was like, isn't it real? Because he had smacked him. I was right there. I was right there. It was crazy. That, nigga, all right. Hey, bro, hey, nice to meet you, Tom. Oh, my God. I'm so proud of you. So, nigga, Will and them, they supposed to come to this party. They ain't coming. They ain't coming. Right. So that goes on for like an hour uh, of the of the whole scenario. I, I, I'm trying to make sure I don't I ain't going to get nobody's name up. But another one of our friends, basically, let's just say they work for production on the old academies. They came over and they was like, we had to have a meeting real time after the smack so that they could edit the uh, broadcast for the West Coast. Cause I forgot we watching we in there in real time. It's airing live, you know, Eastern and Central, but nobody cares about Pacific Standard Time. So they airing it, they editing it in real time, so that when the broadcast starts and the West Coast people see it, it's taken out, which is hilarious to me because before the West Coast sees it, it's already on Twitter. So whatever you're editing out, you're not really preventing anybody from seeing. Because it's already in the world. The the internet, it's all, I, by the time the West Coast even got to it, I didn't seen the version on you know East Coast time. I seen Japan's unedited version. I seen Australia. Australia's unedited version. I done seen it on Twitter. It's on YouTube. It's everywhere. So how how you ain't seen it? How the West Coast don't know. What threw me off though is watching it because I was watching it in real time. The smack almost sounded like a sound effect smack though that's that's why i was yeah. like okay that maybe that was fabricated but the live edit to try and fix whatever just happened that's when i was just that's when i text you because yeah. that's when i was like oh that wasn't planned because that was way too hiccupy for a professional production for a planned skit there was a duck in audio because they were like we got to mute all this and then they looped chris rock's reaction and then jump cut to the end where chris was about to walk off pretty much Right. Yeah. Go ahead, Angel. What? No, I just said right. I don't. What? I was waiting for you to finish your story about the governor's ball. Oh, I mean that was it. I mean I, I, after that, that that kind of thing just went on for the whole night, talking to all the famous blacks. I never felt blacker in my life than being basically <laughs> surrounded by whites and uh -huh. black people. Whenever we got to interact, them being like, "Nigga, this is crazy." And they, not, I'm not saying nigga. They would be like, "Nigga." You seen this? All right. I, I mean, I'm talking about people. 
Text the pe- text us the people you're talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, throw in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Throw it in the chat. So for me, I wasn't. I, I forgot the Oscars were happening. I knew y'all were gonna be there, but I forgot that it was actually happening. Um, even though y'all sent the picture, I was just like, right, right. I'm not thinking about that because I had my table read. Well, then I get back to my hotel room, and I'm uh, I got in my pajamas. I got on my bonnet. I'm talking mm-hmm. to Marcus on Facetime. And then I see in a group chat, did that really happen? And I'm like, did what really happen? And then somebody else is like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And I was like, now I'm getting frustrated because I'm like, don't you give me another, did that happen? I can't believe it. This is crazy. I was like, what happened? And then they were like, we'll, um, we, they said we'll punch. Chris, this is before mm-hmm. we getting all these extra angles or whatnot. And I was like, what? Because Marcus, Marcus was like, I, I'm talking to him and I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I'm not paying him any attention. So he's trying to get me off the phone. He's like, you can go. Like, if you're about to be doing it. I said, no, no, no. I need to know what this is. So then I was like, oh, babe, they said Will Smith then punch Chris Rock. So we now searching the internet. Travel. <laughs> right. <laughs> we searching the internet. I didn't found a clip. He didn't found a clip. I'm over here doing the little scrub so I could see it frame by frame. Cause I'm like, I'm trying to see if there's any connection. Mm-hmm. I was like, cause it could be a stage, you know, it could be they used to call it the John Wayne, where you like, you know, go yeah, to like bowling. Right. Yeah. So I was like, it could be the John Wayne. He's an action star. He would know how to do that. Uh, punch, right? And then but I'm seeing like, no, his hand never makes a fist. Mm-mm. I was like, and I'm also reading Chris Rock's mouth because so far everything I'm seeing is the edited, redacted version of it. And I was like, huh, still not sure, but it looks real. And then I'm getting in the chat. Oh, but no, he is yelling from the audience. Keep mm-hmm. my wife's name out your mouth, right? And you and can I see was the like, anger. That's not acting. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, now I'm trying to figure out what was said. Wow, guys, with all this violence, it sounds like some people could be using Talkspace a little more. Using Talkspace feels like having a therapist directly in your pocket. That's why being able to reach out to my therapist or psychiatrist at any time from anywhere makes taking care of my mental health super easy. I'm more relaxed when I'm traveling. Knowing if I need to talk with my therapist, I can just send a message from wherever I am. It's a great feeling. You guys would know if you guys use Talkspace. Working through things in therapy can be tough, but connecting with my therapist is not. Guys, I love using Talkspace. As I mentioned before, the opportunity of being able to directly consult with a licensed, unbiased therapist at the palm of your hands by sending a quick message, it's super easy without having to overthink what your schedule looks like. You don't even gotta leave the house. That's the best part. I wholeheartedly recommend Talkspace for therapy. You can sign up online and start therapy the same day. Like I said, guys, you can text, video, or send voice messages to your licensed therapist, so it's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions from the comfort of your home. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest end-to-end bank-grade encryption technology to store client information from complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. So you don't got to worry about anybody being in your business that don't need to be in your business. So this is what we need you guys to do. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace to match with a licensed therapist today. Go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code CREW, that's with CREW with a K, to get $100 off your first month and show support for the show. That's CREW with a K at Talkspace.com. Now let's get back to this. What caused him to get up out of his seat? And then I found, finally found the joke. So this is all coming together like a, a, like a lasagna. There's just layers being added on. I didn't get the whole platter at, at once. I didn't get the whole meal at once. It was like, okay, we got the pasta, now the sauce, now the meat. And then when I heard that it was the reference to G.I.J., and I said, oh, well, now I see why this happened. And so in this group chat, because I'm going before group chat, they were like, I mean, but it wasn't that bad of a joke. I was like, as a woman with alopecia, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, if I were to have been embarrassed like that, on national television, the largest event in Hollywood, 
there's a the chance that the person who said it is going to get stomped until the commercial break. <laughs> Off a of Chris Rock ad lib too. So this is, I was so like, that's oh. where I want to go. That's where I want to go, go next. Ahead. So here's here's my honest thoughts, and I usually tap dance around stuff when it's my friend, and you know, Will's a close friend of mine, close friend, mm. big close. Friend. Mm-hmm. Here's he's, he's my first opinion, and this is the most pervasive or the most dominant opinion I have. This is the biggest case of two things can be true at the same time. And it's Absolutely. more like five things can be true. Let me start with this. If you have read Will Smith's book, Will, you and you like really read it, you understand that Will's personality was built off of the time where his dad hit his mom and his uh his reaction was to freeze right and other times in his life where he felt like he should have done something he froze he grew up feeling like a coward and i'm not talking about grew up as a child i'm talking about the whole will smith movie empire Mm -hmm. was about him uh protecting that thing and never looking like a crowd a coward again so one of his most think one of his biggest fears that he talks about in the book is being a coward or not defending the woman he loves right his mom was a woman he loved the most at the time his dad hit her he didn't defend her so fast forward to jada being the woman he loves and an opportunity to defend her Mm -hmm. so we've all as minorities black and brown in here microaggressions are on purpose have been in a situation where something happened to us at work and we laughed first and later on wish we had went off, did something. We've all done that. And I'm sure people of other races, but I'm saying more minorities. OK, so I could see him know as a trained media personality, knowing that after that joke, they're going to come to him on the camera for a reaction and him being like, ha, 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 I'm a laugh. And then as a husband, seeing Jada out the con- corner of his eye or looking over and seeing her with the eye roll. And then flashing back to his childhood and thinking, oh, I'm not going to let that go down again. Today, I actually have something I can do about it. And maybe even because I reacted this way, I'm going to react. I'm going to swing the pendulum all the way on the other side. That's one thing I think is true. The second thing I think is true, although Will and Jada are mega celebrities, I think the toll of being a celebrity and being a celebrity on social media. I I get, you know, stuff on social media, not nearly as much as will. I don't get tabloids and things like that. They get tabloids. They get memes. They get jokes. They get all that. They get podcasts. They get podcasts (laughs) that do their best episodes based on them. Mm -hmm. I think that slap was at Chris Rock, but I think it was directed to more than Chris Rock. if, Mm. If that makes sense. I think Mm -hmm. that was for, you know, that meme of Will where he's like this, just looking exhausted. Mm -hmm. And that red table talk after the August Alcina thing. I felt like if Will could slap the world, the the group of people on the world, they they felt that through Chris. Also, Will be slapping. Yeah, it's not the first time. He wouldn't smack a white man. He smacked that reporter on the red carpet a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Y'all remember that? Recorder yeah. kissed him on the cheek. Mm-hmm. He smacked him. The movie Hitch. Kevin James doesn't know how to dance. He smacks him. Will be smacking. In his book, he talked about as a kid and as a young rap career, will be fighting. Chris Rock also. Oh, wait. Here's the next thing that can be true. Chris Rock could have thought he was making an innocent joke about Jada's bald head. Right? Uh, the other thing that's true is Jada has a medical condition and her bald cut isn't, uh, she's talked about this. She didn't just cut her bald, her head bald for fashion. She cut it because of a medical condition and she shared a part of it, but that doesn't mean that's the whole part of it. That's just the part that she shared. Right. Can I interject? Can I interject? Because it's going to drive me batty. Cause a lot of people are like, but did Chris know about her alopecia. This is one thing I know without a, without a shadow of a doubt. 
if a white woman were to show up to the Oscars, bald headed, that typically has hair, no one is going to do a joke about her hair for fear that her hair loss or cut is in conjunction with some sort of disease. They're not going to make the assumption that it's a fashion choice. They're not going to make the assumption that it is okay to even comment about her baldness. So while we say, we could say all day, he didn't know, I didn't know. That is not something that if a white or an Asian woman were to come up in there with a buzz cut, that anyone would feel comfortable about questioning or poking or prodding about it without making sure they knew all the facts, period. That's a great point. That's a great point. Also, with that whole thing with Chadwick, remember Chadwick was sick and people was making fun of him. We didn't know he was sick, making fun of mm -hmm. his weight and his weight loss. And it was all jokes, calling him the crack panther, things like that. Um, I didn't see this personally, but um, the, the Braxton sister that just passed away. Mm -hmm. um, uh, people uh, Tracy. Tracy. Apparently people had made jokes. I didn't see that personally. Uh, and then it turns out that she had uh, cancer. So I think what Will, I mean, Will kind of said this in his apology and we'll read that later. Um, I think people expect career jokes. I don't think they expect appearance image jokes that are not like your outfit is crazy you know what i'm saying um as people were saying that too like if a white person had had made that joke we would have been going crazy and then i've seen this comment i saw this comment in patreon i've seen it a comment uh, also on social media people are like but it's just alopecia what does that even mean? It's well, just alopecia. <laughs> people are insane. What does that, <laughs> that mean? It's just people, alopecia. People want to trivialize things. This, this is also the thing that's a little frustrating with me about Chris Rock. He did a whole documentary on black hair. And the reason why he did it is because he knows how, how like when it comes to black women and hair, we have a connection to it that is different than any other culture. Uh, the fact that we will openly wear hair from someone else's head. We mm -hmm. will openly wear hair that is flammable. We have a completely different connection with hair. And you would think out of all people, a man that decided to do a documentary on hair would know that black women and hair is not something that you just, you know, you just jump out there in the street with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, uh, it's something that like, especially... I don't know, especially being that the joke wasn't that good <laughs> to start there. And mm. it was, it was, it was like, why do that? Why even make that as a thing? Like nobody else was like, oh, Jada, you have a bald head. She's been rocking this bald head for a little bit. She shaved it. She grew it back. Her hair started falling out again. So she shaved it again. So it was kind of like a thing of like, this was a, not even a good joke. And you heard what made it even worse is that you heard the audience groan at the joke, which mm -hmm. meant a lot of the audience either knew she had alopecia or mm -hmm. also thought it was tasteless because it wasn't even like, oh, a joke that didn't get laughs. It was a joke that was groaned. Like, mm. yeah, you could tell by the way Chris, uh, Chris is like, oh, come on, come on, that was a light. You know what I'm saying? Like when a joke doesn't yeah. go over and it's not like it's he not was funny, back, it's he was like backpedaling on it, backpedaling. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think just alopecia is a it's a kind of cruel thing to to dismiss that. And also, listen, uh your your hair is a part of your appearance. If your body, for whatever reason, it's falling out to the point that you feel like it's easier to just take it down, you know, bald or basically near bald, and you still have to go out in public, right? You probably feel a way about that. And then to know that millions of people are not just watching you, right? Be embarrassed. And I'll let's, I don't even want to make the same comparison, but I, I'm big in the stomach. I'm not necessarily proud of it. When my stomach be hanging over in videos, I'll be like, ah, dang. When people point it out, I'll be like, ah. If you were a medical condition, and this is just our videos and mm -hmm. our social media, which is little. If a comedian had made fun of my medical condition and I'm already embarrassed and feeling away and everybody's laughing or he's trying to get people to laugh and we're watching it, I'd be like, God dog, man, I don't want to, I, 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 insecurity. And it was in her face. That's the part where I think people, I think miss, like, cause they talk about what well, people joked about their entanglement. 
I don't ever recall anybody, any comedian making a joke to Will's face about... No, Regina Hall did it. When, when Regina Hall did it? When? At the Oscars. <laughs> she made a... She made an innuendo. That, oh, you talking um, about she, you talking about this this uh this current Oscar? See, I didn't watch this it. Oscars. Yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. Watch no. it. Uh, Regina Hall made. What she say? She I don't know exactly the wording, but essentially she it was a an entanglement ish type of joke. Like you know, Will, I don't know you and Jenny, y'all got that thing. You come over with me and be because she was pulling men out of the audience for like a COVID test, and then she was so like, she was making a joke about their open marriage. Right, right, and they laughed. It's, it's, that's still a little different. That's not bringing up August Alcina. That's bringing up the fact we now know y'all are in an open marriage. Man, with all this built up anger, it almost sounds like they're not eating properly. And let me tell you what, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. <laughs> HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen with meals ready in about 30 minutes or less. Plus, quick, easy meals, including 20-minute recipes and low prep and easy cleanup options provide an even faster route to putting food on the table. HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. And you can save on an average over $65 per month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. That's money back in your pocket. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including veggie, fit, and wholesome, family-friendly, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. Because we always like some options. I love using HelloFresh personally, guys, because the last thing I want to do is figure out what I'm going to eat, let alone the ingredients that I need. HelloFresh is great because it sends you everything that you need based off of what you select and what you're feeling that week, so you don't have to worry about heading to the grocery store. This thing literally comes right to your doorstep. That's the best part. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh. And with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. I love switching between the brands. And now our listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount with us. Go to HelloFresh.com slash SK16 and use code SK16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Huh? Who doesn't like a little present, let alone three of them? Go to HelloFresh.com slash SK16 and use code SK16 for up to 16 meals and three free gifts. America's number one meal kit. And guys, while we're here, let's go ahead and talk about ShipStation. Online shopping isn't slowing down anytime soon. Is your business ready to keep up the pace? With ShipStation, you'll never worry about shipping again. Make the switch to a solution that handles all your shipping needs quickly, affordably, and painlessly. <laughs> ShipStation is already trusted by over 100,000 e-commerce sellers. Keep track of orders from any sales channel. Easily find the best shipping carrier with deeply discounted rates. Automate just about any shipping task with just a few clicks. Guys, we love using ShipStation because orders be coming in from everywhere. God is good. Amen. But the last thing we need to do is organize and have to go back and make sure we don't miss an order. So ShipStation definitely helps covers all those tracks. Save time by funneling all your orders into one simple interface no matter where you're selling. Manage every order from eBay, Amazon, Etsy, or your own website from anywhere, even your phone. ShipStation works with every carrier so you can always find the best fit for you. Your business can access the same discounted rates usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies. No wonder 98% of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep using it for as long as they're in business. It's that good. Ship more in less time with ShipStation. Use our offer code CREW with a K to get a 60 day free trial. That's two months free of no hassle, stress free shipping. Just go to shipstation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, type in CREW with a K, ShipStation, make ship happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I'm I'm just saying when they were going through the entanglement, I don't recall there being a situation where when they were in the thick of it, there was a comedian that was bold enough on national television in front of them to be like, while y'all in the midst of this hurt, yeah, let me throw a joke at you. Let me yeah. <laughs> let me put egg on your face right here in front of everybody. I just I don't recall ever seeing that. Yeah. Now let's talk about the actual slap. How how do you handle this? <clears throat> Chris Rock has a great joke actually about this that it is so fitting. He's saying, I'm not saying I would have did it, 
but I understand. And that's really how I feel about Will. Yeah. I as a now as a husband, right? A husband first. I work very hard to make sure me and my wife are on good terms. M- my wife and I's relationship is of a paramount importance to me. I don't want to do anything that would appease the masses, both the people, the academy, social media, my peers, whatever, but infuriates her, right? I'm not saying Jada asked him to smack Chris Rock. I am saying that if I laugh, especially if I had a knee jerk or a quick response to laugh, and I looked over to my wife, and my wife was hurt, offended, objected, I would then be like, oh, snap, me and her finna be beefing if I don't respond in a way that protects her. I don't know that I would slap Chris Rock or a comedian or do anything like that, but I would like to think and hope that I would do something to protect and defend my wife's honor, regardless of what the world thought about that in a moment. Jay-Z said, I ain't going nowhere if me and my wife beefing. We the house could be burning down, nigga. I ain't leaving. And I was like, yes. Now there's this whole discuss about this discourse about he should have pulled him aside. My sister-in-law tweeted this. She said, wherever you pitch the tent, that's where we're gonna build the circus. Now <laughs> Come on. You, you, <laughs> if you disrespect Jada in private, then I can check you in private. If you disrespect Jada in public. Where is it? Where and now and so it is the disrespect. There is the response. Now, listen, y'all could feel how you feel as a husband to a wife that I love. Y'all probably would have. I don't know how I would respond, but I feel like you would probably have to just be mad at me. People Come have been mad at me. Absolutely. You're just going to have to be mad because like I listen, I told my mom and my grandma this on separate occasions. We want you to do this. We want you to do that. I said, listen, at the end of the day, I don't sleep in the bed with y'all. So if somebody is going to be mad at me in this scenario, I not don't want be, to be the person be, that, I, right. that yeah. I live with, that I go to therapy with, that I'm trying to maintain relationships with. And to add to this, Will talked about this in his book and in documentaries. He's lived so much of his life for the public at the expense of his family. His whole next phase of his journey is to rewrite those wrongs and put his family above his ego and his uh, appearance and his brand and all that. Cause at the end of the day, he got to go home to them. And he spent a lot of his career making sure the public, the box office, all these people felt good about him at the expense of his family. And he said, he's not going to do that no more. Should he have slapped Chris Rock? I wish he did not slap Chris Rock. Of course. I, wish, I, I don't I know how he agree. would have done that. And I feel like that slap was, 40 years in the making, however long it's been since Will Smith felt like he didn't defend his dad until this moment. Mm. I feel like that slap was for all that piece of time. His mom, his mom, his mom. (laughs) I wish he did not do that, but I understand. Now, the next thing I want to say, or I want us to talk about. Wait a minute. Can I give that little? Oh, jump in. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I too. I don't, I do not condone violence. I don't think it is ever the answer. Um, However, comma, it's not that I can't understand how in his brain, in that moment, it called for him to slap Chris Rock. Was wrong. Completely wrong. I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to sit here and say, I wish he would have. I wish I'm not because he didn't. He did what he did. (laughs) So (laughs) it doesn't matter how much I wish. The fact of the matter is he slapped a man. And as you all should know about me right now, if you ruin my day, I'm going to ruin your day. (laughs) I'm not about to be the only person in pain. Everybody else is going to feel it. So also I understand how logically he wasn't thinking. Do I think the Oscars were ruined because of it? No. Do I think it changes everyone's perception of who he has been over these years? No. I feel like in that moment he was a human that made a really bad choice. And that's mm-hmm. it. I do feel like we as um, Black folk 
always like to put the weight of our entire culture on a specific person in a specific time. Mm. Oh, we just set black people back. They ain't no. never gonna let black people back in the Oscars. If that if it took one person to mess up for them not to invite us, they didn't want us there in the first place. Period. Period. <laughs> they didn't want us there in the first place. I yeah. I um think we do put the pressure, and I know I even have a hard time because I I still see people as celebrity, uh, forgetting that these are actual human people, human people with feelings, emotions. It, it, same goes for Chris Rock. So I'm not saying he shouldn't, you know, he shouldn't have to worry about getting slapped at work. That he right. shouldn't. He just he should not have to worry about being slapped at work. Period. Um, but I also know I don't know how I could deal with the amount of they have been the butt of so many jokes for the entire pandemic. Yeah. I don't know. I would be completely bald like Jada if I was under the microscope like they were, because a lot of times stress is what inflames mm -hmm. your alopecia. I would have maybe a couple of wiggles of baby hair, and that is it. Due to all of the amount of stress, some of it, some of it's stuff they brought on themselves, but there are people who are in open marriages that aren't famous that wouldn't have to go under the scrutiny. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's not like they are the first people to have open marriages, but they are millionaires, superstars that were in an open marriage. Um, so again, I don't condone it, but I can't say that if it were me and my husband in that exact situation, that the situation would have ended any better. Yeah, because Marcus? I, Marcus wouldn't have cared, and then I would have stopped caring too. I would have been like, "Oh, you want to embarrass me? Well, everybody's getting embarrassed. Everybody's going to be uncomfortable. Nobody's going to want to talk to me after this, and I'm okay with that. I'm yeah. still going to get my Oscar today. I'm going to leave out of here still as an Oscar-winning actress. <laughs> and at the end of the day, I really also don't care about Will or Chris. The person I care about in the situation is Jada. Like she's the one who was embarrassed." She's mm -hmm. the, we care so much about these two black men that are grown and can make their own choices, right? And it was her that got the, they ended up being the butt of a joke. And they cut to her reaction different. that was so genuine. Like yes. she literally has to see that reflection over and over and over of how she felt in that moment. Right. And I'm sorry. I, I Listen, people can say it's just hair. And that's a lot of people who either, uh, who either a never lost hair or either ain't never had a whole lot of hair. And when you see that stuff going down the drain and just coming out of your hands, it doesn't matter how much you tell. I used to have to tell myself, this is so vain. It doesn't matter. It's just hair. This is so vain. But then I was like, I had to come to the grip of, like when I lost about 40% of my hair. Okay, girl, you might have to shave your head. Now you're going to be out here looking like a little bald eagle. Is this something that you can do? For the longest time, I remember Kevin said to me, when we first were first like, uh, started when I was coming over to a uh, ADD every while every now and again for projects. You were like, "Girl, I've never seen your real hair," and I was like, "Yep, and you never will," because I was over here patchy McPatchy, just patches of hair, just wherever they wanted to be. But it was still like I had to come up with a way to function. But it was still on my mind every single day because I felt like I had to come up with a way to come out in the world and not be embarrassed. So at the end of the day, I don't care about will. Either one, Will or Will Packer. Will Packer produced a beautiful event, even with the slap. Mm -hmm. I thought the event was great. The, the, I don't think it tarnished the event. Um, I don't think it takes away from the work Sidney Portier or Denzel Washington did. This does not make Harriet Tubman roll over in her grave. It's not that big of a thing. <laughs> it was a man who made a mistake, who is now apologizing for the mistake. And uh, at the end of the day, I just don't think if I, if I were honest, if I were in that situation, if I've dealt with stuff they've dealt with for the past three years, that it would have turned out much better. Yeah, I, I want to be clear if, it, if it's not clear. Saying I understand, especially because it's the Internet, let me make this clarifying distinction. Saying I understand is not condoning. Saying I get it. Saying if you read his book, you see this happening not condoning. I want to be unequivocally clear. I think it was wrong to walk up to the stage and smack that man and then go <laughs> sit down. My son texted me, did Will Smith just smack Chris Rock? And also, I just want to take a quick aside. This is mostly white people I saw on, on the internet. What do I, how do I tell my children? What do I tell my children? 
Nigga, you are a parent. It is your responsibility <laughs> to figure out how to tell things to your children. These people are living their own lives. Mm -hmm. Do you think celebrities and the people in the world are supposed to teach you how to raise your children? You figure out what to sell, say to your children. Part of what you should say is sometimes you can make a joke and it goes okay. Sometimes you <laughs> make a joke. The person who you made or the person you made it about might smack you in the mouth. Mm -hmm. especially kids of the internet generation. I grew up learning that sometimes a joke is a joke until it ain't until the nigga don't think it's funny anymore. And now you got to fight. I've been in part of them fights. I've been socked out. Okay. I see people <laughs> socked for making jokes. A lot of these kids grow up on the internet and they say stuff behind Twitter fingers and Facebook and discord. And then you got to see that person in real life and they don't want to type no more. And mm -hmm. part of the lesson should be sometimes people don't think it's funny and it ain't just a joke, bro. It ain't just a prank, bro. Sometimes you're going to get hurt for real. Mm -hmm. Okay? Everything ain't internet. Everything ain't screens and keyboards. Sometimes somebody going to sock you for real. Mm -hmm. Should you have been socked? Maybe not. Probably not. Are you still socked? You are. You ate it. Yeah. <laughs> and you took a bite. At the and end of the day. If that can happen to Chris Rock. Let the record reflect. If he can get smacked by another A-list celebrity, you, my child, talk. Don't talk. <laughs> don't talk crazy unless you want to defend crazy. Because yeah. sometimes people smack you and you talking trash and your butt can't cash that check. That's also a life lesson. Talk crazy. Get spells casted on you. Anybody can get it. Right. <laughs> anybody can get it. <laughs> right. So now I want to talk about, uh, and, and I just want to be clear, again, it was wrong to slap that yes. man. Everybody feels that way. I mean, at least it's, I it, do. It's given that it's 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 wrong, right? Now, here's the thing I want to talk about, which is a, uh, the people I've seen the most upset on my timeline are comedians, right? Uh, of course. They are just... They're up in arms. Because they don't want to smack. They are up in arms. Because they have Comedians I know... Comedians I don't know. How <laughs> Whitney Cummins, who's a, who's a white woman comedian, mm -hmm. this woman said, <laughs> be like, first of all, before I get to Whitney Cummings, let me talk about the difference between black people and white people, I think, with this subject. First of all, I do believe this, white people, I love y'all. Y'all don't understand the layers of this within the black culture, so it's hard for you to have a discourse where you don't know what you, you sound like you don't know what you're talking about. Right. So Judd Apatow said he could have killed Chris, sir, sir, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Will Smith could not have killed Chris by smacking him. OK, just he deleted this tweet because people were like, oh, that's crazy, man. You didn't talk nothing about James Franco and all that stuff. Oh, when he Ooh. was harming them women and all that stuff. Listen, these white people be crazy. acting up. Huh? Could have killed him. I said, because white people be acting up. So let's oh my slap God. It, don't compare it to what some of these white folks be doing. Y'all, let's just stop. But Whitney Cummings said, when people take jokes, literally society is just over. Girl, society been over for black folks for a long time. <laughs> before <laughs> jokes. When the whole world is stacked against you and you got to you gotta what be is, every What odd. is society? I don't. Josh, Angel, we got to beat every odd just to be behind still. Not ahead. <laughs> Not even even. We got to overcome insurmountable odds just to be behind still. And you mm -hmm. talk about society is over. Listen, a lot of times y'all just unfunny and y'all ain't got a good joke in your whole repertoire. So all you have is um, baseline jokes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now if that if people if you if you ragging on somebody in the crowd and that person's like, oh, what's up? You're like, ah, ah, oh, <laughs> e hey. if you want to talk like that, you need big Samoans on, on either side, right? Yeah. That that to me, I always I don't like when comedians are like, what if I can't do this? What can I do? Like basically what we were saying, are we are saying don't make jokes about somebody's medical condition. Or somebody's appearance if you don't know their situation. That's essentially yeah. what people are saying. Nobody's not saying don't take make jokes. It's always like I need to be able to joke about anything and everything without consequence, without repercussion. It does not work like that in the real world. Mm -hmm. Okay? And guess what? 
you can make jokes about anything and everything, however you want. There are just certain consequences that come with that. This is America. Nobody stopped Chris Rock from making that joke. He didn't go to jail for making that joke. He just had to deal with the repercussions of making that joke. He was honestly, I think, so surprised. Because it's Will Smith, even though he was walking towards him, I still don't think Chris Rock in a million years ever thought he was about to get smacked. Nobody thought it. No, I don't even think Will knew what he was going to do. I don't, I think Will could have been like, we're going straight to the wild, wild west. Listen, I don't think Will knew what he was going to do. I just think he thought I have to do something. Mm. That something wasn't a good choice. <laughs> it's the problem. The yeah. something was a terrible, terrible choice. And well, guys, hopefully at the least when everybody went home from the Oscars, their grass was green. And if not, they need Sunday. Worried about all the chemicals you're using to keep your yard looking its best? Traditional lawn care lays down 90 million pounds of pesticides each year. Sunday is different. They're on a mission to change how people care for their yards. Sunday can help you grow a beautiful lawn without the guesswork or the nasty chemicals. Guys, I love my dad, but he doesn't have the greenest of thumbs. Our lawn was looking raggedy. That is until we found Sunday. Sunday's definitely done its thing and made its grass green as can be. Their custom plans include fertilizer and everything you need to easily care for your lawn. And with the ingredients like seaweed, iron, and molasses, you can feel good with kids and pets being around. All you have to do is visit Sunday.com, put in your address, and their lawn analysis tool does the rest. They then use soil and climate data to create a personal nutrient plan delivered to your door when you need it. Just attach the ready-to-use pouch to a garden hose and spray. It takes less than 15 minutes. Best of all, this stuff really works. Sunday's offering our listeners 20% off. Full season plans start at just $129, and you can get 20% off at checkout when you visit GetSunday.com slash SK20. That's 20% off your custom plan at GetSunday.com slash SK20. Let's get back to the show. You know what? For me, though, and probably the reason why I'm just like, huh, after having to see all those snippets of, um, and this is different. I know I'm comparing apples and oranges, but I'm still going to let you know where my mind frame is. After having w watched Judge Katanji be bullied, right, mm -hmm. and keep her composure, it was, for me, it was a relief <laughs> to see us not have to. I right. feel like there is a pressure. There's a crazy pressure when you're black to always make the right choice. Because if you don't make the right choice, especially when others are watching, you feel like you let down everybody black, right? Um, and in Will's case, in a such a big moment, it's just like, oh no, we need you to act right <laughs> because yep. you are only number four in Is this it really? category. It's uh Sydney, Denzel, Denzel, Jamie. Oh, he's number five. Uh Forrest Whitaker. Was that? I thought Forrest Whitaker won for a uh, supporting. Did he supporting, win for I think it might have been? It might uh, have been. the dude from um Mahershala? Has he won? Mahershal, I, I, he might have been supporting twice. Okay. No, he and he was one. He was one. I mean, so he, we still pretty much, we still only on two hands. We're still counting on our hands. So we still counting on our hands. So I get it. The his moment is a still a historic moment, and we don't want for his historic moment to be overshadowed by his slap. But that was his choice to make. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can't... <laughs> no, we're supporting both times, Angel. Supporting both times? So, yeah, he's either both four times. or five. Yeah. So, so, we still, you know what I'm saying? We still here in this, you know, place of where we're just like, hey, we're trying to be considered, you know, as talented. But it was still his... Um, It was his moment to ruin. He's the yeah. only person that has to... Well, is the he thing, like... Ruining is relative, right? I want to go with one thing you said. Go ahead. I, I re I'm starting to watch the wire over again to, to your point about having to be right every time. And a Avon Barksdale was talking to D'Angelo, and he was like, in this game, all it takes is you to F up once. Be a little slow or a little late once. 
and it's over. And then he's like, how can you not be a little slow or mm -hmm. a little late ever? Mm -hmm. It's life. It's impossible. And to Will's point, you seen the movie Flight? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember when Denzel just had one more lie to tell and he would have got off? He just had one more. And it was like a, a baby lie. All he had to do was say something about the woman. I remember exactly what the lie was. But he just had to say something about the woman. And he was like, I can't. I can't tell one more lie. That's what I feel like Will was going through at that moment. Like, I can't do one more fake smile. I can't do one more. It's cool. I can't do one more. Uh, chalk it up. Uh, we'll dap it up later. I can't do one more. I've done this my whole time. I'm not going to do it anymore. Right. So let's go mm -hmm. back to the comedy aspect. Somebody asked in the Patreon, Come on. are you going to ask about um, people in your audience before you make a joke? For me, this is easy. I don't I don't roast the audience. That's not part of my no, set. no, 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 no. This wasn't a comedy show. <laughs> right. Right. It's two different audiences. Like you you can't you're not gonna go here. I mean, people might show up to a roast that aren't used to getting roasted, but this this isn't that this isn't calling for this. Is the Academy Awards. They're there for a potential win of an Oscar. Like, I don't think those correlate. But he get th that roast or the jabs that Chris Rock did are in line with the jabs that celebrities get at the Oscars. They be they be hitting what you could call below the belt. But it is very rarely, if ever, image based. It's almost always career based. I feel like mm. the career is within within line, but people's appearance. I, I can't remember. Correct me if I'm wrong. I can't remember. A time where people were like, your hair, your body, you're fat. You know what I'm saying? You're skinny, you're yeah. short, things like that. It's usually related to your career. Um, and it's it's not like it's not like a roast, like a comedy central roast of Jada, where that would be uh more than likely within bounds, but it's also kind of something you sound you you sign up for. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I you know, again, he did it. I mean, that's really what it is. It's not condoning it. It's just he did it. Uh, I, it, it there, and I think I think a lot of people are having a hard time just accepting. And so there, yeah. uh, people are trying to rewrite it. Well, he should have. He didn't. Yeah. Well, he could have. He did not. He well, slapped here's the other him. thing I wanted to say. You reminded me of it, Angel. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I'm not having oh, a good one yeah. of those today. Now, after he did what he did, what is even wilder than slapping him is that the Academy let him stay in that seat and accept the award. At of minimum, course. they should have been like, fam, you got to go. Like, we're not going to throw you out, but somebody will accept it you. in your place. Dog, you know why? You just... Because white people don't care when we hurt each other. When people are like, not in front of white folk, they don't care. They don't care what we do to each other. They don't. They don't. And I have to say, you gotta, y'all gotta check your own prejudice. A lot of people were like, well, this is so, this is so ghetto. That is to say that only people who are living in under income or lower income neighborhoods are the only people that be slapping folk. Rich mm. white folk be slapping people. Ooh, okay. Slap. People of everybody, every color, every economic status be slapping folk. Mad folk be slapping and hitting people. But white people don't care what we do to each other. Trust me, the people who are like, what am I supposed to tell my kids? They're pick me's. They just want attention. They don't care. They don't care. We could, they, they, they could have, he could have punched him. They could have had a fall, all out brawl. Them Oscars still would play that music. And we'll be <laughs> back with the next category. Oh, yeah. Christian Bale, remember his act up on set of Batman? He called everybody and their mom, everything but a child of God. Them people was at work. He yes. ain't hit nobody, but he talked crazy, right? Mm. But I, I, I was like, once I realized it was real, I was like, they just let him sit down like that? But listen, Hollywood, they gonna let a star get away with stuff that they won't let other people get mm -hmm. away with. Yes. A PA can't even sneeze too loud and you're fired. Will Smith was able to smack somebody and fix his suit, go back and sit down, decide if he wanted to continue. Mm -hmm. he, the Academy didn't give him a choice. He decided, fine, I'll stay here. Yeah. And they didn't turn the music on him. His speech was over five minutes long. They didn't turn no music on Will. I know that. 
Oh no. No. They it was didn't. over three hours already. They let that man say everything he had. He said, you know, for lunch today, <laughs> I was thinking, I said, man, salmon or the chicken. And I just been having I had chicken three times this week. And I said, I can't have I'm gonna go with the salmon. Or I do like the mahi mahi because it is a light and flaky fish, but it still has the firmness that you would <laughs> like. And then I was like, well, what is that? Quinoa? Throw a little <laughs> scoop on there, too. <laughs> that man was out there saying he was taking his sweet time. Not mm. only, they didn't even play one piano tink. Mm -mm. Ain't nobody even, people tie their hands behind their back. Yeah. Listen, what's crazy is, because everybody's like, an HBCU grad produced this. Will Packer uh, produced this. Congratulations. They probably had more eyes on the Oscars after that moment than any Oscars then, uh, in the history of oh, the man. Oscars. Angel. Will's numbers are amazing. Ah! They are amazing. Do you Listen, hear me? You just reminded me of Angel. First of all, they all they care about is ratings. That's why they have Will Packer. The second thing about Will's speech that I thought was hilarious, knowing the full world saw you slap a man, you came up and said, I'm about peace and love, <laughs> protection, <laughs> respect, honor. All I want to do is hug the people. I just want to mm -hmm. hug and love. Mm -hmm. Will, you you smack the man? What mm -hmm. about with this? tears, with tears streaming down. Protection and love. If you were to say anything about me, it's about I love the, the people. I, I just <laughs> that's I, how you know he's been a superstar for so long because the way he did that PR know. spin, I still would have been mad. And that ugly <laughs> black mother talk about my hair one more time. You think that's all you just wait until I get up out of this girdle and it's all like I, I still would have still been on a high. I would not have been able to come down at all. And what was like. Let's let's turn a little bit. Let's turn to this. Martin Luther King said, like <laughs> <laughs> he was on some old. He said was he was like, a was vessel of love, Angel. That's what he said. I'm a vessel of love. This sometimes it's tough love. Sometimes it's disciplinary disciplinary love. Sometimes it's boundary setting love. It's all. It's like when your mom beat you, and I did that because I love you. There's another way. <laughs> and then in his apology, he ends with, "I am a work in progress." <laughs> Come on. Under construction is what he is what he said, and didn't even apologize to Chris. Then he was like, "What I'm not going to do is that tonight. If oh, y'all waiting oh, for oh, that, can't apologize in the moment no. after that. No, you just if you him. your if hands you still gonna, tingling his face. If he was going to apologize that night, he was going to have to do it in that moment by taking Chris, slap him, sorry Chris, and then giving back his uh <laughs> microphone. There was no way I was. Let's like, read the apology man. while we're on Please. that. While you said that, Will Smith said. Violence in all forms is poisonous and destructive. My behavior at last night's Academy Awards was unacceptable and inexcusable. Jokes at my expense are part of the job, but a joke about Jada's medical condition was too much for me to bear, and I reacted emotionally. I would like to publicly apologize to you, Chris. I was out of line, and I was wrong. I am embarrassed, and my actions were not indicative of the man I want to be. There is no place for violence in a world of love and kindness. I would also like to apologize to the Academy, the producers of the show, all the attendees and everyone watching around the world, including me and the attendee. I would like to apologize to the Williams family and my King Richard family. I deeply regret that my behavior has stained what was been what has been an otherwise gorgeous journey for all of us. I'm a work in progress. Sincerely will. P.S. Of all the social media people, Kev on stage is my favorite. <laughs> I don't I don't, don't think we have this. Josh, hold on. Okay. And funny. I love that his body reflects what average regular working people look like. It's I not that everybody that. has to be physically fit and have shoulders that work good and not have plantar fasciitis. Some of us people <laughs> just be having our crack out at the top of our butt, even though we want to have it in our drawers. Please follow him as he follows Christ. Please download Kevin Stage Studios app. <laughs> When, didn't he say something about he said uh, oh you I have another part of it that you missed go ahead please please I, that says, was all I saw on mine but no 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 there's it. more I'm sorry that you didn't know. get he's like in me defending my wife's Jada it's it's more of what I have learned from marriage being hard I recently got an early copy of a book 
called Marriage Be Hard by, again, my favorite comedian, Kev on stage, and his <laughs> gorgeous wife, Melissa Fredericks. I think we could all take a page out of this book and strive to be better spouses. Coming out September 14th, pre-order now. 13th. 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 Pre-order now. We're available. Yeah, Angel, I, I was like, wow. Be, that's wild. That's I wild. never thought in wow. this moment he would take the time out. To, I don't to hit see what board. you guys are reading. Gosh, I'm trying to scroll. Will I, underscore. It's the underscore Smith. You got it. Yes, oh, you, more personal. Yeah. One. Will underscore Smith official. Yes. yes. Got it. More, yeah. Hat, the real. Parentheses more personal. Okay. <laughs> this is this is the fin stuff. He yeah. Said, he said he wanted to be a river to his people. People think rivers are calm. Okay. Mm. Rivers have dams. Whitewater rafting has yes. ri rivers. That's on a river. Rivers only Jesus, only Jesus and the Father can calm the storm. That's <laughs> rivers can also be raging. He just happened to be a river raging at the moment. Listen, I'm waiting to hear what Chris Rock has to say because he hasn't said anything. He's been oh well. This is quiet. The, this is what Tony Baker said. And I think you're absolutely right. The best part about this for Chris Rock is he is one of the world's best comedians who has ever lived. He's in most, a lot of comedians, top five or 10. We were already going to his show, Melissa and I, him and uh, Kevin Hart. If I didn't have tickets before, I would oh. purchase tickets because I know that opening 15 is going to be fire. You hear me? Fine. Somebody said he put a statement out, but when I Googled it, I don't no, see nothing. I ain't see no real statement. Where, where no, they ain't no it's real not statement. on Twitter or Instagram, so I don't... They reading it on The Onion. Oh, no. Not again. No. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, there's no statement. Everything I see and is... listen, uh... I'm telling you, I, I felt bad for Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. I felt bad. I didn't know about her struggles. Melissa told me. I don't know. I, I know that I wouldn't have made that joke. I know that for sure, but I know that I've made jokes in poor taste, had to apologize, had to delete videos, had to do all that type of stuff. But I know that Chris Rock, for sh without a shadow of a doubt, did not expect that response, nor would he have ever no. thought that was... If he thought that was a thing that could potentially have happened, he right. would have never done it at all. Right? No, he was just literally the straw. It was like, if you think about it, in, in the world of things that have been said uh, about them and Jada, you're right. What he said wasn't like the epitome of the meanest thing that has ever been said about them. Yeah, yeah. It was the timing, I think, mm -hmm. in the situation. I, I really feel like if it were in a smaller situation that wasn't televised, this yeah. would have probably been something that would have been like, hey, don't do that. And Chris would yes. have been like, oh, my bad. I think yes. it was the whole heightened of the event that um, that made the joke even worse. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like that, yeah. I think, I, but I agree with you. I don't think he did it to be malicious. I, no, I don't think so either. It was definitely poorly executed. But yeah. Um, yeah. He gonna Here's learn the other to, thing that's just wild yeah. because of the internet. Obviously, when things happen like this, I, not obviously, but people comment. I went to Chris Rock and Will Smith's Instagram. People were in Chris Rock's Instagram saying, yo, Will just smacked you, bro. Dang, bro, Will just hit you. Why? You you don't think he knows that? Yeah. He felt that. He was there. Why would you yeah, need he... to tell a person who was smacked on live telev television that you watched? Why would you need to go to his Instagram and his latest post and be like, yo, you smacked me. I mean, you just got smacked. Why would someone say Jada should have worn a scarf? I'm looking at the comments. I'm reading the comments. Jada should have you worn know, a scarf? Yeah, somebody put that in the comments on, on here. Jada should have worn a scarf. I am, I am so confused by people. I, I'm so confused how anyone could or should say how Jada should present herself if she doesn't want to be picked on. Listen. I'm confused. I don't, that's I'm a confusion. wild thing to say. 
Uh, but I've heard people say if she that uncomfortable about it, she should wear a wig. Or wow. she could just wear her hair like she wants to and not and not be cool with somebody making a joke about it. She can also do that. Here's the other thing I thought about. People are like, why didn't Chris hit him back? Oh my well, god. Chris Rock, if I had to eyeball it, <laughs> I could safely say he's well short of 200 pounds. Mm-hmm. He's a little man. And I saw him Saturday five, night. Seven, five eight. Was he about five seven, five eight, Josh? He's, 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 mm-hmm. Not Will very, uh, not very solid of a human either. He's, you know, yeah. He's a he's petite dude. Will Smith is, is easily six three, six four, and mm-hmm. north of two hundred pounds. Two fifteen is what he was trying to get down to. Okay. Also, Chris Rock. He got the first slap. I think in that moment he decided, hmm. I, you know, he was so in shock that his first words was, "Wow, Will Smith just smacked the this out of me." Out of me. You know how shocked you have to be to just utter what happened. That's how yeah. shocked he was. He was like, "Dang!" Like he was like, "That just happened." Yeah. He, he and yeah. it happened to him, and he was he was just like us. Like Will Smith just smacked him. Will Smith just smacked him. That's how, that's also how crazy the internet and real life is. Everybody watched Will Smith smack Chris Rock in person and on TV. And it was so out of character that people questioned their own eyes. Right. They we did. All, we were just like, no. Although we saw <laughs> this and this, we were like, hmm, that couldn't have been real. Oh people my God. who saw it from 15 feet away were like, hmm, nah. <laughs> Nah. I, uh, the the fact that the person that it happened to it looked like was questioning what happened lets you know how crazy this is. I do feel I do feel like I said. Should nobody have to go to work worried about if they about to be slapped and, by anybody? I do feel for Chris. This is not yeah. me. I think I think us talking so much about <clears throat> us understanding will is not because we don't have sympathy for Chris's situation. I think it's because that is what the world is talking about, is about more yeah. so Will's reaction to Chris versus uh, Chris because being attacked. Chris didn't do anything out of character. Chris <laughs> right. Rock did what Chris Rock does. Right. On that stage, he does yeah. that. Yeah, 2016, people kept bringing up this 2016 thing that he said to Jada, about the Oscars, and he didn't make fun of her image then. He was doing what the Oscars hosts always do. They roast the attending guests. They know mm-hmm. who's coming. They roast them. Will is the one who acted out of character. That's why the point, the thing that's shocking is that Will did this. If if Kanye did this, this wouldn't happen. If this happened at the Source Awards, and I don't mean because they're rappers, I mean just when you grow up in the street, disrespect is a different thing, and at those awards, they have had fights happen often. Yeah. If a rapper felt disrespected and, and went up and smacked somebody, that wouldn't have been out of character as much as Will Smith, who is, I mean, squeaky clean in his image. Yeah. Smacking somebody. That is that was out of character for the way Will Smith has presented himself in the public eye for the last 20 some odd years. Almost my whole life. Not my whole life, but I think the Fresh Prince started in like 92 or 93. Something like that. Mm hmm. So I was. I think 10. I was twelve. Yeah, that man been famous. He been famous almost for almost thirty. Long time. Gosh, hush. Almost thirty years. Oh, I thought you said I was thirty. No, I was like Josh. You ain't even thirty now as a baby. Here we go. Everybody's nineteen ninety. First episode was in nineteen ninety. I was ten. Josh, were you even alive? I don't know. Everything everything before 93 is a blur. I just see like a <laughs> sack a that I'm just like. So Will Smith has been famous your entire life. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's why it was really cool reading the book because I got a timeline of everything. Wow. Here's a funny question, and I actually thought about this. Kev, you letting Will smack you on stage? I thought about this, and here's the answer. Yeah. Yeah, Will. Uh, Kevin what do definitely you definitely that. I if if I made that joke and Will came up. Oh the broadcast just cut your feet. Joke, 
if I made that joke <laughs> and Will Smith came up and smacked me, I would have had the exact response, word for word, action for action, with the exception of I would have rubbed my face. If he smacked me, I would have been like, ah, it's warm. Will ah. Smith just smacked me. Keep my wife's name out of your mouth. Okay. Keep it. It was just a joke. Keep it out. I'm going to. And then I would have said, <laughs> next performer on the United <laughs> States Oscars of America. <laughs> Coming up to. <coughs> And he dis <laughs> hold on. Chris Rock disrespected Joseph Patel too, though. Who's that? He's one of the producers for uh the Quest Loves documentary. Oh. Okay. Booty Tay. I didn't okay. hear that. Well, he is because Chris Rock announced the winner being Quest Love and four other white guys. Oh, quote, I would have done that too. He was Josh, he was shell shocked. No, nah, he said he was gonna do that the night before, but that's a whole other oh, thing. Okay. Well, that would have been me. Uh, let's yeah. let's run through it. Bad joke. Will Smith's coming. I would have been like, oh, wow. Will Smith's coming to give me a hug. Why is he doing that with his head? That's an odd way to start a hug. Smack. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> Will. Why you, I, I, why you did that to me, Kevin? You got too much stature. He would have punched you. He would have socked you. He would have made sure you went down. I'm bigger. Just in case okay. you have Let's hands. Just sock. in case you got hands. Yeah. So he going to sock me. Jaw, clap, click, click. <laughs> you know, when you're talking to Jaw, you can hear them click. A little click, click. Will, why you punch me, Kevin? We took that photo, Will. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. It was just a keep my wife. Yes, sir. <laughs> and the next winner of the United States Oscar Awards <sighs> is question mark U.S. love. <laughs> From the roots and Joseph Patel. Please Let clap and give them a hand clap of praise and welcome <laughs> them to the United Ooh. States stage of the Oscars of the 94. Also, ah. I would have publicly, before y'all, hold on, y'all sit down. Sit down. Music sit down. music starts playing. Hold music. Wait, I. <laughs> Softly, metacritically, <laughs> to Miss Pinkett Smith, I would publicly like to apologize to you, Miss Smith, <laughs> as a queen. It was my intention to make light of a joke. I was nervous. I thought of it as I said that joke. I said, man, I should not have said that joke. I wish Miss <laughs> Pinkett Smith, I did not say that joke. I apologize for the jokes I said four years ago about everything I said. To your mom, Gammy Norris, <laughs> I do enjoy your podcast. Hi, Miss Gammy. Hi. I, I like you. I love you. Willow. I apologize. I didn't play the song with my hair back and forth because I didn't have children at that time, but I should have supported your musical career. To Jaden, I didn't like After Earth. I didn't even say it publicly, but I just thought it, and I am sorry. Love what you're doing with Just Water. Okay. You're an amazing kid. To you are King an Richard icon, huh? And okay. Serena, and anybody who played tennis. To Martina Navratilova, I apologize. <laughs> To the district of South Central Los Angeles, uh, Parks and Recreational, I am donating 50,000 tennis balls effective immediately. To HBO Max, I'm sorry that I watched the movie in theaters when I know you are trying to start your streaming service. I should have watched both. Netflix, I apologize. I do share my password. I will no <laughs> longer do that. I would have went out like a straight sucker, okay? You, let me tell you how it would have went with me. It wouldn't have happened because I only make fun of celebrities behind their back. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not stupid enough to do it in their face. Do it behind their back on this podcast. Mm -hmm. If I am in their face, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You ain't this is Angel performing. Angel doing the Oscar. Girl, Jada, you look good. Green <laughs> look good on you. <laughs> I ain't never been Girl, with a baddie. But you, girl, that would have been the... I ain't never been with a bad ass. But, Jada, you got a big fat ass. Next up, ain't no way everybody is getting bigged up. Gassed up. You hear this me? This is Angel on set. Hey, gas prices are high, everyone. <laughs> to me, Angel. I guess I should purchase a Tesla. Joke one. Joke <laughs> Come on. You know the thing about dating in L.A.? It's hard to find love when everybody wants to be an actor or actress. <laughs> Joke 
two, bah, right, pow. Three minutes left. <laughs> Anybody see that movie on Netflix? I did with my personal password. <laughs> Okay. Coda, what is that? A movie about the deaf community? I'm glad they have that representation. <laughs> I'm not even making jokes anymore. I'm just <laughs> saying. Just saying thing. what's happening in the world. Putin, am I right? That's uh, what I'm doing up here. I'm, I'm up here Russian farting because I'm nervous. <laughs> sometimes it's my stomach. Also, sorry, Putin. I You be killing people after they say stuff. So. <laughs> You, yeah. And then, you know, I ain't going to be able to talk about no white for person because I don't know who they are. Booty tag number one. What, yes. what you here for? What show you did? Tell me. Oh, good job. Euphoria. Zendaya. That's you, that's you Zendaya. Zendaya. <laughs> good job. What you here for? What you nominated for? Give it up for him. Wow. wow. You got one of these already? That's good. That would have been... <laughs> That's good. The way the way the way I was after I messed up the uh, sorority and fraternity names at UW, <laughs> Never and then again. I spent the rest of the night just saying what was about to happen next or what just happened. You just saw Phi Beta Sigma clap, clap for them. <laughs> next, you will see Delta Sigma Theta. <laughs> you just somebody... saw Delta Sigma Theta. Now you will see Alpha Kappa Alpha. Wait a minute. You just saw Alpha Kappa Alpha. G give it up. They they like pink and green. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute, though. No. Somebody said I would have been like, I have four kids. I would have started talking about my children. Let me tell you about them all. We call him the landlord. Could y'all put a picture up on him on the screen that you're gonna put the dead people? Put a picture up of my baby. This is a ma. <laughs> He don't want a potty train. He's just pissing and crapping in his diaper. He's two. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Let me talk about people I know. Let me tell you about Josh Gonzalez. That boy lived way out in Camarillo. Camarillo. <laughs> Woo. He like taking a picture. Boy, I can't get that camera in focus sometimes. Oh, and the flash. I'm telling you. It <laughs> Not the show, the, cam the camera. I, there's no way I'm not making fun of any celebrity no. to their face. They could hire me for a roast and I'm going to be roasting myself. Angel, they hire you for a roast. You're going to bring a pot roast here. I got this one. I got greens and carrots and potatoes. This and... Up. What y'all mean? Oh, mm -hmm. no, no. I, oh, I had this on for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. What you mean? Make fun of people? Mm -hmm. I thought we uh -uh. were feeding people. Mm -hmm. That's not no. my testimony. Mm -hmm. oh, I got a pie in the, I got a pie uh -uh. in the back. Y'all see, y'all saw what happened to Chris. No, yeah. that's mm -mm. Um, behind hey, their backs. You know what? Wrong or right? Will Smith ain't gonna endure no more jokes about Jada to his face. I know that. No, they're gonna people who gonna try it. That's I what, don't think they're gonna try it to his face. I think I don't, people, listen, it's not gonna be people who have anything to lose, though. People I think who people have, have some, nothing to lose won't be able to make a joke to Will's face. You're right. But if they they would be like, if they could, they would. Any, I, I truly think any celebrity that has like Dave Chappelle ain't going to do it. Uh, 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 Kevin Hart is not going to do it. Anybody no. who has something to lose, they're not doing it. No. But Or who might cross paths with him. They not yeah. going to do it. And all those comedians, all the comedians, all they like, I'm going to make a joke. Well, nigga, okay. It's, no one's gonna hear it. What are you, what are you gonna? Do? Will, Will, the problem isn't you making a joke, right? It's you're not on the Oscars, right? Them making joke is like me making a joke behind their back. That's what you're doing. <laughs> you're making a joke behind their back because nice. they're never gonna turn to hear it or see it. Now let me tell y'all what I'm gonna share my screen because people in the comments are saying this. Y'all want to see the funniest thing this that ever happened about this here? Ooh, let me tell y'all real quick. Let me show y'all. I'm gonna share my screen. You're talking about Lupita. Nah, no, Peter's face was funny too. RDC, she said. RDC, oh Shouts. my god! Shouts to RDC, man. Friends of the pod. Friends of the potty. Bless you, Angel, and your Thank lineage. You. Hold on, Thank let you. me get this queued up. But did y'all look so pretty? You and Melissa were depper. Uh, Kevin. Oh man, I know, Kevin. We wanted, to, wanted to talk about that, but this game. All right, now well, let's. Let's watch this. Hold on. Yeah, I want to know what famous people you met on the carpet. Mm. Uh, that wasn't that hard, bro. Yeah, see, it wasn't that 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. I can hear it, but I can't see it. I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't click not, there. It's not working. I Listen, y'all, I don't know who RDC is either. So, y'all, I'm right there with y'all with this booty tay. Here we go. Mark Phillips. Y'all seeing it now, yeah? Yeah. Ooh. Nah, that wasn't that hard, bro. Yeah, see, that wasn't that bad. That's what I'm okay. saying. We just go home. Man, don't lie to him, bro. He slapped the shit out of him, bro. You thought he slapped the shit out of me? He did, bro. Your you head hurt. Hurt. You said he slapped the shit out of you. I don't know. You, yeah, you said that. Bro. Man, hell no, nah, then, man. Come on. Hey, let me see my shoes. Let me see my shoes. Bro, bro, bro. bro, bro. Man, man, man. Break, bro. Nah, it's not too late. I'm saying, man. It's like, over now. Nah, I was playing. I thought he was playing. I didn't know he was trying to fight for real. Let me see where. Nah, bro. Nah, you should not know that. You should have did something while he was on stage. I didn't have no grip. I didn't think I had grip. Your family was out there, buddy. I know. That's what I'm saying. My kids not know. My kids not gonna disrespect me now. Bro. You're not gonna get no more no. serious roles in your movies, but nobody's gonna do Hey, stop playing. Go get real right now. Bro, go get real. Go get real, man. Oh, no, that's on the Oscars. That's love. Well, <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> Not the black no. air forces too, man. I'm telling you, I'm ready to fight anybody in this family. Anybody, Jaden! <laughs> you can't fight Jaden. Jaden! Seriously, bro. No, because that shit was weak. He caught me off guard. I was coming up there to shake my hand or something. I don't think that joke was that serious. I was playing with. Well, <laughs> man, no, that shit weak, bro. At home, all my life, bro, they've been playing me like I'm a kid, bro. Everybody hates Chris. Bro, Every fucking thing I've been on, not a joke, bro. Well. <laughs> Hold on, there's more? I never saw this part. Yeah! 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 Oh, is that supposed to be Will Smith? Oh, it's supposed to be after. I don't know. I didn't on Twitter it didn't have that part. Because nah, it didn't hit as hard, but the rest did. Man, when he said my shoes didn't have no grip. <laughs> <sighs> oh, all right. Well, so women, what famous people did you meet? Man, on the carpet. Let me tell y'all what. Let me tell y'all what. It was crazy. Okay, it was tell crazy. Us. So I'm on the influencer part, right? I'm with influencers who have more than me. You know, a lot they of don't. Them. They don't though. No, mm -hmm. they do have more followers, Josh. They mm -hmm. do. But you have the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, they hey! You have the Lord. Oh, hold on. Let me show y'all this one more. One more. This dude had me crying laughing. By the way, people are hitting me up like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> I don't, the whole joke is I don't know Will for real. Y'all <laughs> y'all saying it like I know no, him. No, they're like, he no. talked to you afterwards, right? Bruh, I don't know him for real. I know him like y'all know. I met him the once. This dude had me cracking up. Oh, man. I'm trying to see somebody say something about Tony Baker. Oh, Tony Baker would have fell out and made sure his <laughs> Tony Baker would have fell out and made sure his dress shoes fell off. <laughs> that would have been Tony. He been like, thank you. All right. All right, y'all see? Okay, y'all see Spice? Nope. This is one. Hold on. You talking about him doing the red carpet afterwards? Yeah. <laughs> This is this is spice. He's so We have our Oscars red carpet court. Correspondent Anthony Adams. Anthony, what do you see there? Hey, hey guys. Um, what's up, everybody? This is um, uh, Anthony, and uh, I am here live at the at the red carpet at the uh, source uh, at the <laughs> Oscars, and. Um, I get a chance to interview Will Smith. That's Smith. <laughs> um, but first of all, before we begin, um, I just want to say that I enjoyed every last one of uh, Will Smith's movies. I think they all should have got an award at the highest level. Um, <laughs> uh, Hitch. Um, all of them, all of them were fantastic, and I feel, it, um, parents just don't understand. <laughs> and summertime, um, they all should have got um, <laughs> so at the highest levels. Um, <laughs> uh, 
stupid. I I think that um, <laughs> King Richard was an amazing movie, <sighs> and um, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I should have won in uh, uh, multiple awards. <laughs> awards. I'm not my for obvious reasons. <laughs> Is he coming right now? <laughs> um, back to you guys up in the studio. Um, <gasps> may need a little bit more time. Oh, my God. Need, Spice uh, is a no. treasure. He is he's, just a gem. He's so yeah. stupid. That's great. Uh, I'm going to save the who we met for when we talk about it tomorrow. Okay. okay. So we have plenty of stuff. The experience of it and Marcus and Angel's conversation we will we will have tomorrow. We're doing this bald and beautiful, so Melissa and Marcus can speak their mind, their piece, and we can tell you all the actual part of the Oscars that we would have told you had this not happened. So tune in to the bald and beautiful, and we'll see you next time. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. All right. Now we're so, doing the ads. So how do we need to do it now, Angel? <laughs> um, I mean, what I mean, what really needs to be done is just somebody else doing the ads. But uh, you want? Hold on, let me pull them up. <laughs> like I'm sure I can get away with it now. But what it is, what has to happen is, <clears throat> what has to happen is that I am supposed to um uh, get every single endorsement that I do approved mm -hmm. that is going to be virtually impossible because i don't know what's coming down the pipeline for here's the thing i find out the day before when greg sends it to me okay so it's best that i don't do any of the reads because i can't clear any of them do you get what i'm saying like it's not yeah hold on i'm gonna forward this to you josh are we now. um are we in person tomorrow no, mm. no. Oh. I think Mark said he wanted to be because he would prefer. Yeah, he the would. Internet. The internet be messing up or something like that. I just need to know if I need to get my life together in the morning or not. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me see. <clears throat> I have to clear it with the network. For those of you all asking. Um, and the problem is, even if I, I could transition and all that stuff, it's the, a lot of the times they ask for personal endorsement and we tried mm -hmm. when me and Kevin were in the same office for him to do the personal endorsement. Kevin's not going to pay attention. It's not going to work. I am. You a lie. It's not going to work. I'm not. I'm true. <laughs> So I might as well hand them over completely you so the ads can actually, because you're not going to do it. And that's, that, and then that's fine. All right. I'm going to just do it. <laughs> but we can do them like this from now on. Don't bake them in. You don't have to bake them in, even if that is their preference. You don't have to. You want to do it like that from now on? No, I actually, I need to go. I, I need to. Ah, shoot, I need to be able to do this now, but I don't need to be able to do it, man. What? I need to do this now, but I I have to be at therapy in 13 minutes. Um, I, I mean, we could just record them tomorrow. Oh, yeah, you can record them during right, the TV, TV time. Okay. <laughs> All right, see y'all. God bless y'all. Good to see y'all. People keep I saying miss Christmas. you guys. Christmas. I, I ain't seen it. I've I've Googled AP multiple Press times. put something in a quote, but I don't I mean nothing came from his personal. Person. He ain't posted so. on IG since March 14th. Yeah, I don't I don't trust any of that. Kevin and Josh, I miss you guys. I miss you too, Angel. You know. All I see apology is Chris Rock. I mean Will. Will, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I miss the stage crew and the angel wings, but I get to see y'all the same. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah. Hold on. Somebody's saying here's Chris Rock's apology, but I don't see where. It's probably that Associated Press. Line. Oh, it's here's Chris Rock's apology to his friends, Will and Jada. But I don't see. Yeah, it hey, doesn't. Well, since it's not Chris, I don't want to. Since it, he's not quoted. It just looks like a statement. I don't want to. I don't want to quote it. And we'll bring up the Tiffany Haddish thing tomorrow too. Yep. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Just a reminder. Right, God bless you. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. PST. All right. Bye. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another one. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another one. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another thing of fire. With my boy Kev on stage. And that chick angel.